Hey everyone, it's Jason. Welcome to another Star Wars Unlimited um, unboxing. This is for the Sparks of Rebellion booster packs. Uh, so you can go check out the other two previous videos. I'll link in the description where we went over the rules in part one. And then in part two, we went over the starter decks for uh, Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader, which are all part of the core set. So we might get some overlapping cards um, from that set. I think the only cards that might have been exclusive to the starter deck might have been Luke and Vader. Um, yes, we're going to definitely hop in. There are 16 cards in here, so I have no idea how they're laid out or anything like that. Let's see if it says anything on the back. That's a really cool UPC, though. Uh, Luke on uh, Tatooine there. Um, Alright, so what do we got here? It says each booster pack contains 16 cards and include approximately one leader... One base slash token card, nine commons, so as we take them, we actually only have 14 cards, uh, nine commons, three uncommons, one rare or legendary, and one premium foil. So yeah, once you take out one leader, one base token, and one foil card, you're left with 50, uh, 16, 54, 13 cards. Um, so that's not bad to 13. You know, it's roughly about what you get in most packs nowadays. Um, I don't know how they're laid out, so I'm assuming, like, most games is probably common, uncommon, then the rare legendary in the back, uh, premium foil maybe before or after that. Don't know where the leader and base and stuff, so we'll have to see. So, um, you know, sometimes it's fun to not, to try to not, uh, reveal the rare card right off the bat, but we'll definitely see what we get. Um, alright. First pack. Alright. A Thrawn pack, eh? Alright, we are going to start with our first leader here. And I'm going to apologize right now as I butcher half the names of the characters in this game. Because uh, they're very weird sometimes. But we're going to start with Jane uh, Urso, uh, Resisting Oppression. Um, I don't know all about Star Wars. I've seen most of the movies. I actually haven't seen the last couple. I haven't seen any of the new TV series like Mandalorian or The Bad Batch or Obi-Wan or anything. But I've seen most of the movies. I just don't think I've seen the last episode 9. I don't think I watched yet. Uh, but I'm fairly familiar with lots of stuff. Um, so I'll try my best with knowledge on things as we go. Um, Alright, so here we go. We have her. She is... Uh, oh, she's artist by a hut. Um, action, exhaust, attack with a unit. Then the defender gets minus one attack for this attack. That's cool. And then epic action, six or more. Flip her over. And she is going to gain us um, four, seven. And when a friendly unit is attacking this, the defender gets minus one attack. Cool, she just reduced people's attack while she attacks. It's the same exact artwork on there. Yeah, it's just, it's cut off. I just, I didn't notice the gun flare. Uh, which is because it cut off by the egg. Um, cool, so there's our leader. And then right along with that, we're going to get a base. Uh, the chopper base on Atalon. Uh, so yeah, right here, if I combined these two together to make a deck, I would have, be able to use, easily use yellow cards, um, and the heroic cards, but everything else should cost me more. So I could very centralize my deck. Yellow is cunning, by the way. I could centralize my deck, but it wouldn't do it. So on the back here, we just get a token on the back of our leader card. So we might actually say, it says one, yeah, base, yeah, base slash leader token. I do love that. That's what they did for the backs. So as you get multiples of these cards, you just have extra tokens, which is not a bad thing either. All right. Our first common here, a moment of peace. Give a shield token to a unit. Very helpful. Regional sympathizers. Restore two. Ooh, very good. Um, gorilla attack pod. Um, rebel vehicle and a walker. Interesting. Grit. This unit takes plus one for each damage on it when played. If a base has 15 or more damage on it, ready this unit. Nice. This comes in later. Um, also interesting because it's aggressive, but it's also a heroic card. It's a rebel walker. 
Neat. I haven't seen that before. Uh, patrolling V-Wing. When played, draw a card. Um, occupied sea Occupier Siege Tank. It's an Imperial Tank, which also has Grit. Um, Alright, we've seen this one in the starter deck. Vanquish. Defeat non-leader unit. Straight up ability to defeat someone can be very helpful. Especially for some of these um, bigger cards. Like, guys, like 4 defense or 6 defense. Right? Um, maybe just... Def you can't defeat a, a non-leader though. So you can't defeat one of their leaders unfortunately. Um, Mining Guild TIE Fighter. That's neat. It's a Glime Green. He's a fringe. On attack, you may pay two if you do draw a card. Cool. So you'll play this right away, and then later you can uh, use him as an extra card draw. Um, Lawful Insurgent. When played, if you play another card this phase, each opponent draws a card, then discards a random card from their hand. Yes. Forcing opponents to discard randomly is mean, and I love it. Um, our last common is our first event, our second event card. Defeat and Upgrade. Uh, a Compensate. Law. I probably should have read what it was called. That's nice. Nice that they've included a nice common card. Um, notice this also doesn't have any colors. This is a general card as well that can be put in any deck. I didn't even actually know that was a thing. Um, so I love that as well. There are cards that just be put in any deck, any color. Um, and that's super helpful because... I, I look at, like, compares to, like, Loracana. Um, there are so few cards that let you destroy items. Items are super powerful. Then they started making more, but they're in specific colors. So it's even harder to still play them all the time. All right. Our uncommons are Forced Surrender. Uh, draw two cards. Each opponent whose base you damage this base discards two cards from their hand. Nice. Um... I also love the fact in this that, like, you have white, which is rebel cards, essentially. It's heroics. And black, which is villainy, which is typically Sith or Imperial. Um, versus Force and, um, although Force really, Jedi, I should say. Jedi and, uh, rebels. Um, but I like the cards like Aggressive, you know, or Cunning. Uh, like, the other colors, they're not necessarily good or evil colors, which is a really great way to do this. Um, Alright, we have the forces with me. Um, choose a friendly unit to give you give two experience tokens to it. If you control a force unit, also give a shield token to the chosen unit. You may attack with a chosen unit. Cool, so he gains a bonus of two extra attack and defense, plus if he may takes damage just to avoid one of it. That's nice. Alright, our last uncommon is Pirated Starfighter. Underworld Vehicle. Uh, raid 1. And when played, return a friendly, non-unit leader to its own hand. Yes, bounce cards. Bounce cards are always good. Alright, our rare card. Ding, ding, ding. Is Del Miko, Providing Overwatch. Imperial Trooper. Uh, restore 1. Um... Each event an opponent plays costs one more. Awesome. So yeah, you get this guy out. It's going to punish your opponent. Um, to, to have, you're going to have to try and focus on defeating him. Otherwise, all their events are going to cost more. Alright, then finally we got a foil. Which I'm guessing a foil can be at any rarity. They're eh, basic foils. I'm not really a fan of these foils. I get it. I don't care for them. Uh, I would much rather not have extra foil cards in my game. Um, give me give me a puzzle card or something like that, I guess. I, I guess in the end it doesn't matter because I really don't care for the foils that much. Uh, but here's a volunteer soldier. Uh, raid 1. If you control a trooper, this unit costs one less to play. Cool. Neat, neat ability. Another not that character, just that's who it is. Alright, our second pack. We have Hira Singula, Spectre 2, uh, Rebel Twi'lek, and Spectre. Uh, ignore the aspect penalties on Spectre cards. Okay, well, we haven't seen any Spectre cards, so I don't know what the, as well, I know what the aspect penalty is. It means you can play cards outside of 
um, green and green and white with her. Um, and green was I don't think I've had too many command. Um, yeah, so it's kind of interesting, right? So she's basically green with a little bit of. I think most of them are going to be one of the four colors: uh, red, blue, green, or yellow. Um, and then their then their secondary on them is going to be the heroic or villainy. I think heroic and villainy are going to be a coverall for everything. Um, and then your base is the other thing. So basically, you get one of the two of the four main colors, and then hero or villainy. Um, yeah, so basically you can play specter cards outside her color very easy, but we haven't seen any specter cards yet. She's a 4-6. Ignore the penalty on them cards. <laughs> she keeps that when she flips over on attack and they give an experience token to another unique unit. Cool. Um, the Administrator's Tower from Cloud City. Is this the same one we had with uh, Luke's deck? I believe it is. Yes. So, uh, it's alright. We got a duplicate. But if we're getting one per pack, it's not going to be... You're at least going to have a better chance of getting a bunch of different cards to build up your deck. Experience token on the back. Alright. We have Steadfast Battalion. A trooper. We have another Trooper. Um, on attack, if you control a leader unit, this give this give a friendly unit to, to this phase. A vigilant Honor Guards. Well, this unit is undamaged against Sentinel. Jega Agitator. Um, Saboteur. When this unit attacks, is Sentinel defeated and the defender's shields? Um, on attack, you control a leader unit. This deal two damage to a ground or base. Cool. So if you have a leader, you get out. Now, it can't be the leader that's turned horizontally. It has to be in, in play, but that's kind of nice. Makes him a little more powerful later on. The Snow Speeder. Ambush and attack. Exhaust, exhausting enemy vehicle ground unit. The Gladiator, Gladiator Star Destroyer. Uh, when played, give a, give a unit signal for this phase. Um, Viper Probe Droid. When played, look at the opponent's hand. I'm kind of skimming over some of this stuff a little bit that I went over in the starter decks. So if that's why it's I'm not spending as much time on certain cards, that's why. Bounty Hunter Crew. Um, ambush. And one play, you may turn the event from the discard pile to its owner's hand. Interesting. Uh, ooh, a restock supply. Choose up to four cards in the discard pile, put them at the bottom of their owner's deck in a random order. Uh, this can be very helpful again, yeah, because if your deck runs out, you take extra damage. Um, this could be very good for that. Um, this is interesting. So we have a Wampa, um, who has like full art, right? Because everybody else has a border on them, right? Kind of show what they are. White, red. I wonder if it's kind of like just green. Yeah, so they kind of have, I think they have like, um, like black, but then black and yellow. They kind of mix some of the color ideas because it's black and green versus just the green. Um, Blue and white kind of gains it the white sparkly. So it's like they gain the sparkles of a heroic or villainy. It's kind of neat. But why is he full art? Like all the way around. That's interesting. It's cool. Um, he also has a different number. Look at that. So he's uh, it's, uh, 252. And he's card number 427. It says every card have a potential to have a no border. That's kind of neat. Again, I'd rather have that than a foil. Like, right? It doesn't change anything of the character. It gets your, maybe, like, your reminder text. Kind of like, like, it's like, here's regular, here's advanced play. I'd rather have that than foils. That's cool. All right. Our uncommon is Bright Hose, the last transport. Um, Sentinel in one play, you may turn a friendly non, non leader ground unit to its owner's hand if you do draw a card. Um, I'll get your guys back to replay them. Force Choke. 
If you control a force unit, this event costs one less to play. Deal five damage to a non-vehicle unit. This can this unit's controller draws a card. Our last uncommon is tie advanced. When play, give two experience tokens to another friendly Imperial unit. Our rare card is Relentless, the Constantine's Folly. The first event played by a component loses all abilities. And we've seen that in the starter deck, but that's still not bad to have. And our foil is the Imperial Interceptor. When played, deal three damage to a space unit. Um, yeah, like, you gave me a borderless card every time versus a foil, I would love that. That's, that's my jam right there. All right, our third leader is a familiar face. We have Chewbacca, the walking carpet. That's, that's awesome. Um, play a unit that costs three or less from your hand. It gains Sentinel for the phase. Awesome. He just has to play a guy for free every turn. Uh, well, every time you use one of your actions, essentially, but it's still pretty cool. Flip him over. He's a 2-9. He has Sentinel and Grit. That's pretty nice. Now, the downside is, if you play him, you can't use, you can't have a regular Chewbacca in your deck then. You know, so it's kind of like give or take there. I really hope there's, the Han Solo version is the opposite side. So you see, like, Han's, from Han's point of view, um, you see Chewbacca in the back. That'd be cool. All right, we have a green Echo Base from Hoth. I wonder if eventually they'll have, like, lower health. But they'll have a special ability. That would be kind of interesting. Resilient. Uh, an upgrade. Uh, so just plus 3 health. Death Star Stormtrooper. 3-1. Escort Stiff. Um, when you control another green unit. This unit gains Ambush. Scout Bike Pursuer. Who has Grit. Ardent Sympathizer. Well, you have the initiative. This unit gets plus two. Oh, that's cool. Like, another reason to have initiative other than just getting to go first. That's neat. Um, ooh, an upgrade. <laughs> Academy Training. I don't know if I like this. Because is that... It basically is like showing children stormtroopers. Um, which I mean, maybe it's just how it looks. But that's what it looks like to me. Uh, but yeah, Kuku, not bad. Uh, snapshot Reflexes. Uh, when played, you may attack with the attack unit. So pay one, give them, basically they gain, you know, the same thing as experience token. They just get to attack. Asteroid Sanctuary, exhausting enemy unit, give a shield token to a friendly unit that costs three or less. And our last common is Snow Trooper Lieutenant. When played, you may attack with a unit. If it's an Imperial unit, it's to attack for this attack. Our first uncommon is Distant Patroller. When defeated, you may give a shield token to a cunning unit. Cool, a blue. Cartel Spacer. When played, if you control another yellow unit, exhaust an enemy that costs four or less. And, ooh, a unique 97th Legion, keeping the... Peace on Sullet. Uh, this unit gets plus one, plus one for each resource you control. That's interesting. So it's normally technically a zero, zero. So if you had something that lets you just play this, like, way early, it, it would still possibly have, even if you somehow got this out on turn two, right? Uh, something that says play a unit from your hand, right? You got this on turn, turn one, you had two resources, still be a two, two. Um, as opposed to it costing X and gaining that. That's kind of cool, though. So probably it's going to cost you a 7-7, seven, seven, um, which isn't bad, but you can just only get bigger from there. Our rare card is, oh my gosh, it's a legendary. So a little elder for legendary. That's cool. We have Vigilance. Choose two in any order. Discard six cards from an opponent's deck. Oh, that's nasty. Heal 5 damage from a base. Defeat a unit with 3 or less remaining HP. Or give a shield token to a unit. Nice. And it's a double cunning though. So this is, I think our first one has double of the same. It's just, just going to cost 4 unless you only have 1. Then it costs 6. 
with six to do that's not bad at all. Um, that's awesome. And then we got a foil rare, which is Obi Wan Kenobi, Falling Fate, Sentinel, and Linda Figa. Give two experience tokens to another friendly unit. It's a fortunate draw a card, and that was in the base set as well. Awesome. Oh, I got a legendary right off the back. That's not bad. Ooh. From the pack art, Leia Organa, Alliance General, Reaction, Attack with a Rebel Unit, you may then attack with another Rebel Unit. Wow, that's pretty, that's pretty nice. Uh, it's just five or more, she flips over. Uh, becomes a 3-6, Raid 1, just plus one while attacking. When this unit completes an attack, you may attack with another Rebel Unit. Nice. Ooh, we got a red base. We haven't had one there. Uh, Castro City from Vardos. Now, I think we've only seen bases in the four colors. I don't think we're going to see... And it'll be interesting. I wonder if we're going to see any that are just villainy or just heroic. Or if they're just going to be in the four color. Now, on the back side, we have the other token, which is a shield. Very cool. All right. Infiltrator still. Attack units gain Saboteur when it's using attacks against our Sentinel and defeat Defender Shields. Um, Battlefield Marine, 3 3, not bad. Rebel Pathfinder, who has Saboteur. Making opening, uh, giving a unit minus 2 minus 2 for this phase, heal 2 damage from your base. That's nice, solid card. Um, Tanking a Braggart. Uh, raid 2 gets plus 2 while attacking. Consortium Star Viper. Well, you have the initiative. This gains Restore 2. Good. Another reason to try and get initiative. The Frontier ATRT. Um, when you control another vehicle unit, this, this gains Ambush. That's neat. Uh, Weiwei. Return non leader unit to its owner's hand. Uh, Syndicate Lackeys, Ambush. Our first uncommon is Cantina Bouncer. When played, you return a non leader unit to its owner's hand. Uh, cool. It's a double cost as well, but very powerful. Uh, the Blizzard Assault ATAT. When this unit attacks and defeats a unit, you may deal excess damage from this attack to an enemy ground unit. Our last and common, Fighters for Freedom, a Saboteur. When you play another red card, you may deal one damage to a base. So it looks like yellow kind of has um, bouncing effects. Um, green, I think, is going to let you play more cards, if I'm remembering. Red does damage, and blue is kind of um, min like attacking manipulative. This does damage. I think blue lets you... Um, do I have some more blue cards in here? Yeah, I think blue is, like, messing with stats. So, like, blue is going to give you, like, pluses and minuses to bonuses. Red is going to let you do straight-up damage, generally. Yellow is going to let you kind of bounce or move cards around. And I think green is kind of letting you play extra cards to get attack more or get more resources. Cool. Alright, our first, or our, our rare card, rather, is Emperor Palpatine, Master of the Dark Side, uh, from the starter set. Um, kind of cool, but also a bummer that I already had him. Um, and then Outer Rig Headhunters, uh, Rig 1, Attack, if you control a leader unit, you may exhaust a non-leader unit. So, kind of a bummer that, like, I think, out of my, like, four packs so far... Two of them, two of my rare, a couple of my rare cards have already been, like, ones from the decks. Uh, but that's what happens, right? Not much you can do about that. Oh my gosh, what is this? I got a Borderless Leader card. Um, that's nuts, right? These Borderless cards are cool. I love them. They could have just done them like that, and I would have been happy. Um, yeah, number 269. Interesting. Director Krieg, aspiring to authority. I think now we have a leader of each color. Uh, but again, he's blue, but now he's a blue villain. Each friendly damage unit gains plus one attack. And when we flip him over, we have restore two, and each friendly unit gains damage unit plus one attack. Cool. 
We have another red location, Catacombs of Tagaria from Jaga. With a experience token on the back. Echo Base Defender Sentinel. Guardian of the Willis. Uh, who is a force user. I haven't had a lot of force users, so that's nice. The first upgrade you play on this unit each costs one less to play. Partisan Insurgent. When you control another red unit, this gains raid 2. Fleet Lieutenant. When played, you attack with a unit. If it is a rebel, it gets plus 2 to the attack. So, so far we have like little archetypes. We have Imperial stuff and we have Rebel stuff. Like, fairly common. We have a couple of trooper stuff we've seen. Um, we've had a few things for vehicles. Otherwise, sometimes it's like, sometimes it's the same type. But, um, haven't seen too much other crossover with keywords so far. Uh, tactical advantage. Give this unit plus two, plus two for this a phase. Surprise strike. Attack with a unit. Gets plus three attack for this turn. So that's kind of cool, right? Like, which would you rather have? Two attack and two defense, so when they get counter attacked, they can do extra damage. Or you want to give plus three, helps make sure they can destroy their target. Or, um, but you have to, but you uh, could get three and then attack a base. It's kind of interesting. Um, cell block guard with Sentinel. Uh, ISB agent. When played, you may reel an event from your hand if you do deal one damage to a unit. Interesting. Interesting. Reveal a card, but it does damage. Um, ooh. The Snow, Snow Trooper Lieutenant with a borderless artwork. Um, I love that. Our first uncommon. Overwhelming Barrage. Give a friendly unit 2-2. Two, two, and then the space, then it deals damage. Equal to its power divided as you choose amongst any number of units. Uh... Kara Blast. It's a Spectre. Hey, it's our first Spectre card, but I think she was green. Um, but that's neat, because you could ignore the aspect cost of that. Um, a friendly unit deals damage to an enemy unit equal to the amount of damage on the friendly unit plus one. Interesting. Um, we have Bell's Mulvis, Temple Guardian, Grick, and we have the initiative of this unit against Sentinel. Our rare card. You're my only hope, Obi-Wan Kenobi. With a top card of your deck, you may play it. If it costs five or less, it costs five less. I'm sorry. It costs five less. If your base is five or less remaining HP, you may play it for free instead. That's neat. Um, also, kind of combining that with, um, potentially with, R2 from the base set. I'm going to grab him quick from the starter deck. Um, I'm playing like a like top card of deck. Maybe put it in the bottom of the deck. Otherwise, leave it. So you could use him in conjunction with that to make sure that the top card of your deck costs uh, costs five or less. So you get it for free. That's kind of cool. Um, awesome. Then we have Urza Bridger, Resourceful Troublemaker, who is Force, Rebel, and Spectre. So yeah, yo, it's cool. This unit completes an attack with the top card of your deck. You may play it, discard it, or leave it on top of your deck. Neat. Uh, an uncommon. So yeah, that Spectre, uh, her character, that Spectre is kind of, we got another Chewbacca here. Um, that's neat. It lets you ignore the aspect costs. I wonder if we're going to have more uh, leaders that have that ability. Or even units that have that, right? You play a unit, it's like, hey, as long as it's in play, you can ignore them costs. That'd be kind of cool. We got a borderless Dagobah Swamp uh, in Dagobah. Um, also neat is on the other side is the token is also borderless. That's really cool. Uh, that they did that. So at least we get a bunch of borderless, uh, tokens. I mean, just see. Um, Steadfast Battalion we've seen. Cargo Juggernaut. Shielded. When played, if you control another blue unit, heal four damage from your base. Keep fighting. Um, this reminds me of the old attacks game. Uh, 
um, big giant guys. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, regular unit with three or less power. That's cool. Uh, escort stiff. Vigilant honor guards. Asteroid sanctuary. Viper probe droid. I'm getting a lot of duplicates in here. Ooh, borderless underworld thug. Doesn't do anything special, but not bad. Um, first uncommon. Canon Jarrus Revealed Jedi. So we're getting some more Jedi's in here. Uh, Jedi Force Rebel and another Spectre. Um, on attack, you may discard one card from the defending player's deck for each friendly Spectre unit. Heal one damage from your base for each different aspect among the discarded cards. So cool. So, so you have Imperial, which are going to be villainy cards. You have Rebel, which are going to be heroic cards. Um, and your Spectres are going to filter in all the different cards. I'm assuming they're all heroes, right? Heroic right now. But they're going to um, give you bonuses for having multiple different colors. Um, but your leader is going to let you basically just ignore them. So it's kind of a neat way to like have a grander deck building with these specific cards. Plus the fact is like some of these guys are also rebels. So they can work with the rebel deck as well. Or they have Force or Jedi, so they can work with that stuff, too. So, that's pretty cool. Um, I just hope we see another one. Like, I hope, like, there's a Bounty Hunter one that's like that, too. Like, on the other side, that'd be kind of cool. Uh, Bib Fortuna. Jabba's Major Domo. Um, shielded. And when he's played, give him a shield token. I'm, like, one of the first cards I think is actually said that action. Uh, pay, playing an event from your hand, it costs one less. It's not bad at all. Our third uncommon is uh, Colonel Yularen ISB Director. Uh, when you play a green unit, heal one damage from your base. Not bad, not bad. Our rare card is Heroic Sacrifice. Uh, draw a card, then it's... Then attack with this unit. This attack gains plus two attack and gains when this unit deals combat damage to feed it. Interesting. So you gotta sacrifice your guy, but he's just gonna gain an extra two attack. Um, which could be very worth it. Um, also, be nice for guys that maybe have a like, one defeating ability. Because you can force your defeat on that character, right? Um, that's pretty cool. Alright, we got a foil card, but it's a rare. Um, so this is an interesting little piece of trivia I just learned. This is Fetch Fire Spray. Um, pursuing the Bounty. So, you might be like, isn't the name of his ship the Slave One? They've apparently, now that Disney owns Star Wars, they've decided they can't call it Slave One anymore. And they're calling it the, because he was a slave... Which I guess is why he named the ship that, or that's what the ship was when he got it. Um, so now they just call it the fire fire spray, which is the type of model that ship is, I guess, if I understand correctly. Um, yeah, so now you'll, from now on you'll see it called the fire spray instead of the slave one. Just in case anyone Star Wars fan knows about this stuff, that's kind of interesting. Uh, when play, if you control Boba Fett or Jango Fett as a leader or a eunuch, uh, ready to this unit. Um, exhaust. Or action exhausting non-unique unit. Okay, that's kind of cool though. Definitely a neat card. Six cost. As long as, you, as long as you have one of them, you can use it right away. Um, otherwise, even still, you just play it and you can use it. So that's not bad. Alright, we have a Seven Ren. Galvanized Revolutionary. Revolutionary, yeah. Action, deal one damage to each base. Interesting. Mandalorian, Rebel, and Spectre. Interesting. So she'll also work with the Spectre card that gains abilities for having different colors. She just doesn't let you play them cheaper. Um, if you play Force, she gets to flip. She becomes a 2-5, and on attack, deal one damage to each enemy base. So, interesting. So, her regular action does one damage to every base. And if you can get her out, she just does damage to the enemy base. So maybe you can try and, like, like defeat enough stuff to make that worth it. Uh, command Center from the Death Star. Uh, Jedi Agitator. Alliance Dispatcher. Action, exhaust. 
play a unit from your hand that costs one less. Snow Speeder, Resilient, Dust Star Stormtrooper, Academy Training, Restocked. I'm hoping there's more general cards. I'm only seeing the two so far. Um, Outer Rim Headhunter, Raid, on attack if you control leader, you may exhaust a non-leader unit. Our first uncommon is Zeb Oralis, Oro Headstrong Warrior, um, who's also a Rebel Inspector. Works with our leader we just got. When this unit completes an attack, if the defender was defeated, you may deal 4 damage to a ground unit. That's pretty cool. General Veers, Blizzard Force Commander, other friendly Imperial units get plus 1, plus 1. The power of the dark side. Uh, your opponent chooses a unit they control, defeat that unit. This is an interesting one because you're forcing your opponent to pick one, uh, which is always fun just as a mind game thing, right? Who do you who are you willing to get rid of? Because I maybe could be like get a hold of their strategy too, because like they're like, oh, I, I can't really afford to get rid of this guy, so I'm gonna get rid of this weaker guy, so I'm gonna get rid of this more powerful guy. Then you know that weaker guy is more important to them for something. Um but it also sucks because it could be they play a, a two cost guy, right? And they have a five cost guy out and now you're destroying the two cost. But it's a lot cheaper than the five cost to destroy whoever. Um, cool. Our rare U Wing Reinforcements Supply Cards. It's the top 10 cards of your deck. For up to three units with a combined cost of seven or less, play each of them for free. Put the other cards at the bottom of your deck in a random order. That's nuts. Some of these high cost cards are definitely crazy. Like, I wonder how. I wonder how many turns into the game this generally goes, right? Um, for these seven, six, seven, eight cost cards that really do like these mega effects. Because if you think about it, you start with two resource in play, right? And then each turn you're going to get one more. So to play a seven, you only need to go five more turns. But green has a bunch of ways of playing... Um, specifically has a way of playing stuff a little bit early. So, even if you got this out turn, like, two turns earlier, right? So, that's f three turns into the game? Like, I can't, I have to imagine the game is going to go five or six turns easily, right? So, if you got this out two turns earlier, yeah, it'd be... So, hopefully you can get these cards out quickly, like... I feel like some games you get like really rare, expensive cards, and you're lucky if you get it out once and it's out for a turn or something before the game's over. Um, and then we have Precision Fire. Attack of the unit gains Saboteur for this attack. If the trooper, it also gains two attack for this attack. Nice. Alright, three packs to go. Alright, so we have Cassian Andor. So we haven't gotten. Too many Jedi. We got Leia, and we got um, Chewbacca, and we got Luke in the starter deck. So we'd really be missing like the big one would be Han. Um, for uh, we haven't gotten like a Palpatine leader. I don't know if he's one. We've gotten Vader. I know we should probably have like a Boba Fett in there. Um, maybe a Hut. That'd be kind of cool. Jabba. Um, interesting. I'm not sure who's all in here because it's kind of hitting the gambling of all over this place. Um, casting Angor, dedicated to the Rebellion. Uh, action, spend one in exhaust. If you dealt three or more damage to an enemy base this phase, draw a card. Interesting, so it's a very specific one he's going to have to do. If he flips over, he keeps Saboteur, though. And when you deal a damage to this enemy base, you may draw a card used to only once per round. We have another Echo Base on Hoth. I wonder if they have border... Yeah, we have a borderless leader. Um, I said, I wonder if they get Galax... Gladiator, Star Destroyer, Vanquish. So again, here's the other thing with this ability versus this power of the dark side, right? So this one costs five. Defeat a non-leader unit. This one costs three. And you get to defeat a unit, but your opponent has to choose who they defeat. So there is that difference, but it's also the fact that this also has a villainy symbol. 
this one doesn't. So it's going to be played in more decks. Um, just a note there. Uh, Partisan Insurgent. Tactical advantage to be unit 2-2 for this phase. Guardian of the Willis. Gorilla Attack Pug. Confiscate. Swoop Racer. Fringe. Cell Block Guard. We've seen Take Down or First Uncommon. Defeat a unit with five or less remaining HP. Okay, so there's kind of like a little bit, a slightly cheaper version of the other one, right? So it costs one less, but that has specific um, emote. But it's also any unit. This can also target a leader. So a little bit differences there. We have a Chewbacca, a loyal companion. Um, the same one from the starter deck. Uh, let's use his attack, ready him. Um, Admiral Ozell, which you've seen in the starter deck as well. Overcoming this is a borderless version. Um, attack. Or sorry, action. Playing a pure unit from your hand. If you just play ready, each opponent may ready a unit. Um, our rare card is also from the starter deck. Is another Han Solo Reluctant Hero. Ambush. Uh, while attacking this unit, deals combat damage before the defender. Um, and their common is a Jawa Scavenger, Sabakur. So this is one of the reasons why I love the um, living card games, like Marvel Champions or um, Marvel Legend. Like, I know it's a deck-building game, but like Marvel Legendary or uh, um, Arkham Horror. Games like that where I can buy it and I know exactly I'm getting these cards and that's it. If I want duplicates more than what I'd have for deck building, making multiple decks, I can go and buy one more of those packs, but I know what I'm getting. Kind of my downside of trading card games like this, right? Um, so they did have the Star Wars deck building game, which I have yet to release any expansions for. Um, maybe it wasn't popular enough, I don't know. Because uh, then they came out with this. So I'm not really sure what they're doing with that. Um, Fantasy Flight does have a tendency to, like, create games and then not make expansions for them sometimes, um, depending on what games they are, right? So, um, yeah, that was neat. Would have been cool to see expansions. This, maybe this is what they decided to go with instead. The problem is I'm getting, especially I bought the starter deck, so I'm getting so many duplicates from the starter deck, which, you know, even if I was gonna, if I was gonna play the game, definitely always nice to have. Like, right, having more and more duplicates, but then it's also the hunt to get specific cards. Some of these cards I've only had one copy of. So it's not really viable to make a deck, and they have to buy how many more packs to go buy singles. I get some people like doing that. I personally, you know, I just want to buy it and have what I have. We have a borderless version of Seven Ren. We have a borderless version of Chopper Base. Which we've already had, but again, I'm going to get borderless versions of the bases. That's pretty cool. Precision Fire. A resupply. Academy Defense Walker. Um, when you're training the AT-AT Huggo Walk. Um, or at -ST, sorry. When play, give an experience token to each friendly damage unit. Ooh, that's pretty nice. Uh, Disabling Fang Fighter. Uh, Mandalorian. When play, you may defeat an upgrade. Uh, strike true when a friendly unit deals apparently does a damage equal to its power to an enemy unit. Oh, cool! So, just a free hit without taking damage back. Another 2 1 B surgical droid on attack and may heal two damage from another unit. Wele syndicate lackeys, Ty Elling fighter. Um, it's a very cheap fighter. Our uncommons we have. Attack Pattern Delta. Give a friendly unit 3-3 three, three for the space. Give another friendly unit 2-2 two, two for the space. Give a third 1-1. One, one. That's cool. Um, it's awesome. Uh, Benhick Two Tubes. Partisan Lieutenant. On Raid Attack. Or another friendly unit gain. Red unit gain. Raid 2. Um, Inferno 4. Forgetting. Um, when played and when defeated, look at the top two cards of your deck. Put any number of them on the bottom of your deck and the rest on the top in any order. Cool. Um, that's pretty neat. 
Um, our rare card, we have good old Wedge and Achilles, Star of the Rebellion. When a friendly vehicle unit gets plus one, plus one, and gains ambush. Nice. And then our foil is a recruit. Alright, one last pack. We haven't seen too many bounty hunters in here. I wonder if that's going to maybe be like the next set. Like, I know that there's a Boba Fett card in here somewhere um, in the set. But I wonder if we're going to get more of the bounty hunters, Mandalorian and stuff maybe in the second set. Like, underworld stuff. Like, this is kind of focusing on the Jedi's and Imperials. Or Rebels and Imperials. Another Director Kreenig. Another Tagacombs of Tagaria. Imperial Interceptor. When played, 3 damage to a space unit. The Metal Ceremony. Giving experience token to each of up to 3 Rebel units that attacked this phase. Uh, seasoned Shore Trooper. When you control six or more resources, this unit gets plus two attack. That's cool. I like these cards, which like play them for cheap, and then they either they survive that long, or later on you can play multiples of them when you have more resources. That's always pretty cool. System Patrol Craft has Sentinel. Open Fire deals four damage to a unit. Another Recruit. Gamorian Guards. Uh, when you control another yellow unit, this gains Sentinel. I think every color gets one of those. Uh, Arzorek Liberator Gunship has Ambush. A Bordered Underworld Thug to go with our regular one. That's cool, though. So I didn't actually guess I didn't pay attention to that before. He's a colorless unit. That's actually really neat, right? Uh, General Dodana is our uncommon... Cartel Spacer, when play, if you control another yellow unit, exhaust an enemy unit could cost four or less. Our last one is a General Virus. Um, we've seen before, but he's a borderless. Oh, we pulled another legendary. I'm going to look at the foil first. We'll end on the legendary. Entrench, which we haven't actually seen before. It's an upgrade. Attack unit can attack bases, but it gets 3-3. Three, three. That's pretty fun. So our last card is going to be a legendary, our second one. We got Mace Wingu Party Crasher. Um, Jedi Force and Republic. And we haven't seen many Republic stuff either. So yeah, there's lots of places for this game to go. Um, when this unit attacks, defeat a unit and ready him. Awesome. Um, I'm going to guarantee I don't have a majority of the set. Um... I wonder how many cards I have. I'm going to pause and do a quick count. Alright, so just a quick sorting out. Um, I have 142 different cards. A um, couple of them I only have like the like the Wampa. I only have the Borderless for. Um, but I'm still counting that. So I have 142 out of uh, 252. So I'm missing about 110 cards. Um... You know, again, the borderless ones obviously count as after that. So if I don't count them in there, I'm missing a couple more. I think there was only two cards that are just only borderless that I only had. Uh, the Wampa and Dagobah. The other one I have is the Command or Chopper Base, but I also have that. So that's three, I guess. Um, so that's not too bad overall. Even so, and I also have five more that I had just foils of, so that actually brings me five more closer. But I only have the foil version, which I'll always include a foil in my collection, but I'll replace it as soon as I get the non foil. So, out of 10 packs and, and a starter deck, of course, the starter deck I, I offered a few more cards, including the um, Luke and Darth. Um, starter exclusive cards. Otherwise, there's the only two cards that were exclusive to that set. Um, yeah, I didn't do too bad. Missing about 100 cards. I got over half the set in 10 packs. I think that's not too bad. So, that means if I bought a full case of usually 24 packs, I would have done pretty darn well. Um, yeah, it should be interesting to see what this goes. Maybe if I find some more packs, I'll pick them up. If you guys are interested, let me know and We'll take a little bit more, buy some more packs and go into this. Uh, just let me know in the comments. See you guys later. Bye.